Hello, I'm Chaplain Patrick Dolan with the Kentucky National Guard. I thank you for giving me a few moments of your time to let me explain an aspect of suicide prevention that I think will be very, very helpful to you in trying to save some lives, at least in understanding a part of the dynamic. In addition to thoughts that we may have of, say, worthlessness, or that the only good thing we can do is get out of everybody else's way permanently. And in addition to emotions, where we get really upset with things and just, just want to leave it all or want to get back at somebody, there is a level of instinct where there are seven categories, seven archetypes, where if all seven of them go down to zero balance, life in a sense is not worth living at the instinctive level. And as a consequence, if bad things are happening in the rest of our world, then we feel that the only thing good left to do is get out of it. Let me give you those seven archetypes rather quickly and then kind of put a couple of them together for you so that it will make sense in terms of suicide prevention. The first one is the sense of peace or knowing the ground rules, knowing where we fit. And when we move from place to place, a lot of the little things, the, the barber shop, where you get your oil changed, where's the best place to get gas, where do you buy groceries and stuff, are, are all upset. And that affects us at the instinctive level. Hence, when people deploy overseas or when they deploy back, even though they're coming home to something worthwhile, there is an instinctive disruption that is problematic. Second one is the sense of beauty, kind of jaw-dropping har um, beauty, harmony. Um, someone that is just stunningly handsome, stunningly beautiful, you notice it. A gorgeous sunset, a particular piece of, of music that is just absolutely classic, that, that calls to you, you in, in your inner sense. A third one is the sense of life. And it's like, why do you want to be outside on a beautiful day? Why do you want to be with nature? Or, if you've ever worked with nursing home folks, sometimes people who have withdrawn completely we can bring back to connection with reality by putting a small animal in their lap. They, after a while, start petting it. And from there, then they start coming back into contact with reality. We simply don't know what causes us. It may be heartbeat to heartbeat, but there's something instinctive in us, kind of beyond our emotions, uh, beyond our thought processes, that is life itself. And hence, suicide that wants to take that away is something really, really difficult. It's got to be something that, that gets down to us really severely. A third thing is the sense of truth. Truth wants to be there, wants to be spread. That's why it's so hard to keep a secret, even if you know you're supposed to do that, and things like a surprise party and stuff. It's just so hard to do. Truth wants to be let out. People go to great lengths to find out truth. I happen to be a scientist. I'm a chemist, and I work with explosives and poisons, and I, I did that not because I like the explosives and poisons, but I wanted to know the truth and I wanted to get my degree and all those kinds of things, but it was worth the effort to find that truth. Another one is the sense of power. Why does someone want to drive a fast car or a big truck or a tank? You know, it's that raw power. Not so much that you're powerful over something else, but you're just connected with something that's really powerful on its own. Standing near Niagara Falls and literally feeling the ground shake, there's something about it even all the things about hurricanes and stuff. The, the power that's there kind of calls to us. There's another one called, we don't have a good word for it in English, it's fellowship, friendship, love. Uh, Spanish have a good word, simpatico, a heart-to-heart -heart connection with another living human being. It's the difference between walking home at night alone through a cemetery or having one other living human being with you or being lost alone in a city like Seoul, Korea, where I couldn't even read the street signs. I tried to, it was overcast, didn't know what direction, all by myself, or having another soldier with me. Just as lost, but we weren't by ourselves. That fellowship makes a difference. That's a bonding that comes particularly when you've suffered some hardship together. And when people come back from overseas deployments, where they've had that bonding with someone else and then suddenly are separated from them by quite a distance. It's a heart-wrenching experience, not because of an emotional attachment, but because of an instinctive one. Finally, there's the sense of rituals. Why are the last 10 seconds of the year any more important than any others? Well, they aren't. 
we just celebrate them that way. And we kind of watch that ball drop, or if you're in Atlanta, the peach drop and things like that. And we get to see something that puts us in touch with the bigger universe, the rest of the universe. Or who sits where at your dining room table or your kitchen table? How do you celebrate or what do you do to mark the coming of summer or the end of it? What are some of the rituals we have in our lives that are important to us? You take those away and life becomes so humdrum that it's empty. And at the instinctive level, there's something missing. Well, the reason these are important is when emotions are upset and when thought processes are not going real well, the instincts tend to take over. That's why flowers are so helpful when someone like a spouse is mad at you because flowers are beautiful and they're living. They appeal to two parts of the instincts. Uh, that's why athletics are so important because they're uh, kind of a powerful and life. That's why we all like fireworks. They don't do anything good. They spend money, they pollute the atmosphere, but we love them because they're beautiful and powerful both. These work at an instinctive level. That's also why when someone is separated from their military unit, they come home, get discharged, whatever it is, there's a radical emptiness in them because not only is the peace archetype uh, kind of disrupted. They're taken away from people that they've been part of. The ground rules are changing. The whole surroundings are different. But the fellowship is broken. Both of those are at the instinctive level. Now these don't surface right away, but they're laying underneath there. So you can talk all you want, but unless you touch some of these things, find out what they are and heal them, then there's going to be an emptiness. Finally, the ritual things. If you've ever been to a funeral, you know that there are lots of rituals. There are flowers that deal with both beauty and uh, life. There are, but there are rituals that carry people through when their whole life has changed. You know, they've lost someone so important to them, and the rituals carry them through. Now, what we ask you to do is two things. Number one is understand that these are a dynamic, and when people think that they've got nothing else left to live for. This, this is part of it. You can't just argue with them and try and deal with the thoughts. You can't just tell them you love them and the emotions are okay. Unless you deal with the instinctive part, it's, it's going to be partially empty. But the good news is that you can put something back in any of these. If you've got a buddy that's feeling really low, take him out and play a game of basketball with him. You don't necessarily have to let him win, although that might be a good thing, but you can let him kind of exercise that life archetype and as well that power archetype. Uh, if you got someone, take him to a movie, particularly a beautiful one or a documentary, particularly about American history. Put some truth back into them. It puts some ritual. It puts some life. It puts some beauty often. There's some neat things that you can do real, real, real easily, and you will know this automatically. What I ask you to do is just realize that this is part of the dynamic, make it work for you, and you can get someone over something fairly temporary by doing anything. You can put anything in any one of these seven archetypes and make it come alive a bit more for them until you can get them some more help and everything else. Now, their life still may be in meltdown. But that doesn't mean their life has to be empty. They may come back with some sense of guilt, particularly because if they have lost someone and the fellowship archetype is broken and they, they feel like they should have been able to do something more about it and, and are blaming themselves and all that kind of thing. They can get some therapy to deal with that, whether it's religious or psychological. But the big thing is you can get them over an immediate hurdle and then have time and healing to put this together. I thank you very much for listening to this aspect of it. If you have any questions, your chaplains can help you explore any of these things, and we've got some materials published on all these as well. Thank you, and God bless you all.